But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. Me ma wa kwa ba edi ba pen dream TV. So make sure say obe subscribe to channel. No no click the bell. So say the the news to our on subscribe to me. I can in terms of what the affair. So make sure say obe like it. Now nah, what comment? No one share. I'm a full frost on Saka. Now comment session. How so? No person watch it. I'm a bit to me. I do. I do. I'm sure. I to hold on. Now man for so. I'm a bit kind kind. Now only say pen dream TV there. Any in some of your cause or Ghana and politics. I'm only a day banner. I'm Saka. I'm a day abroad. Tina so. Me me video. I in Saka. I person no watch it. I'm a day banner. Tina. Me one more day. I'm sure. So be here video we. I'm a nice year we here. Now watch it. I'm a comment session. I see. Let me quickly just respond briefly to the Afrobarometer. My colleague has spent considerable time on our political language, our verbiage, our descriptions of, of, of each other and all of that. I really don't think that that is where we should start from. Look, if democracy is working, you have high integrity, you are conducting yourself well, even when your opponents try to call you a thief, it is the masses who will expose you that, hey, hey, shut up. You have no fact. You have no evidence. They will expose you. Has it been going on this show? I watched a video from this show a few days ago, and I pitied uh, that MP, Honorable Chinia. Oh, my, 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 my boss, state line, my, my. When you subjected him to street proof, he said, oh, you okay, you, let's move on. Let's, uh, another day. You know? So that's what will be happening. If you come to power, you are not corrupt. You have been engaged in insider dealing, in conflict of interest. You are not uh, looting state lands. Uh, you are leading with integrity. You have been appointed over 100 ministers. Your government is not bloated. You are not living a profligate lifestyle. You are not flying private charter when you have a presidential jet, 20,000 euros an hour. Meanwhile, you are telling everybody to tighten their belt. You can't find your belt at all. You are showering in the skies. 20,000 euros an hour. And the people say, hey, we are suffering. Unemployment is at an all-time high, 14.7%. You think that it is language that will resolve these issues? It's not a language matter. Look, let me share with you some frightening statistics. Very frightening statistics. And that is what the youth of our country are responding to. And you see, in these discussions, let's be very, very honest about it. If our colleague politicians in Guinea, in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Kenya recently, and it's still going on, only yesterday, I pity President Ruto. Now he doesn't know what to do again. He's reduced his ministers, uh, the institutions in his country by 47. He's dissolved 47 institutions. He has closed down offices of first ladies, second ladies. Say so we won't spend on them again. Closed down. Suspended special assistance, PAs, reduced salaries by half. He has sacked all his ministers, everybody. He said, go home. The youth says, no, it's you we want. You are the one who was leading us poorly. We want you to go. We are not satisfied. Can you believe that? And only this week, the youth are out there again on the streets. So you see... If Kenyan politicians had this opportunity of Afro Barometer and all the other surveys, and they approached it with honesty, they didn't hide under language and verbiage. The crisis that they have now, the military junctures that have taken over, they will not have taken over. So in Ghana, what is our current situation? The Ghana Trade Report says that Ghana imported food were 26.7 billion in 2023 can you believe that dollars yes 26.7 this imports included guinea fowls onions tomatoes fish beef we imported guinea fowls from denmark can you believe that denmark we have become the third largest importer of tomato paste from germany tomato paste we have more arable land than Germany. We have now become dependent on fish imports. We are also importing tomatoes from Burkina Faso and onions from Niger, which are semi-deserts. 
That is the Ghana Trade Report. Then you've seen the latest one by the Statistical Service, which reveals that 43.5% have experienced severe poverty through deprivations. The report also says that 24.3% of the household population are multidimensionally poor. A third of our population are multidimensionally poor. And 36.7% of people living in rural areas are the worst affected. Multidimensionally poor. I mean, very frightening statistics. Look at what is happening to pensioner bondholders. All of us in school we were told that if you want to invest, oh, we used to join these clubs. Uh, motivational speakers will come. Uh, as you are learning and when you get your job and you leave school, you know, government securities, risk-free, they are the best. That's what they let's, told us. Let's, with the list, they, are, they have the least risk. Yes, least risk. Be careful about those private guys. Now, I have more confidence in going to give my money to Isaac Adongo to keep for me than this Akufuado Baumia government. I have more confidence. Isaac Adongo or Honorable Atu Fosin, our finance experts on the minority, I have more confidence. I will give them my money to keep for me than to go and look for Baumia's government and its economic management team. For the first time in this country's history, we are undergoing a domestic debt exchange program. Meaning, government can't give you your own money back, your life savings. We are forced to take a haircut. Even if you are as bad as me, they say, come you know, to the Bible. Peddle church. such falsehood with ease. Why, why, why do you do that? These are facts. Ghana is not going through. But a, the, a debt the domestic program. debt exchange means that your own money government is not giving you. Yes, that to is you. it. Is that what it means? It says you get a haircut. That's what you get a haircut. haircut of what? You get a haircut. Haircut of what? That is the haircut of what? You haven't seen the pensioner bondholders. Let's, let's not do this. You haven't seen okay, the pensioner no, bondholders. No. Please, please, please. When you were talking, I don't. I, I didn't. Uh, interfere. These are the facts. <laughs> Pensioner bondholders can't get their life savings. They can't get it. They have to. They have to. Yes. Yeah. Those who were demonstrating at the finance meeting are lies. ghosts. Mm? The, yeah, former, the, 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 former, the former chief justice. But nobody has been the, deprived the of The former money. chief justice who joined them. Speak the truth. It's yeah. a ghost. Mm? The, 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 the no former doubt. chief justice of Akufu who joined the protesters to pick it at the Ministry of Finance. It was probably an imposter who went to the Ministry of Finance. And you see, this is the problem where even the people's pain will not be recognized. Government officials will not even sympathize with the people. After they have created this mess, what didn't we tell you in Parliament? When you were borrowing like there's no tomorrow, you borrowed at a point it was over 100% of GDP. Living lavishly, appointed over 100 ministers. Look at the list of presidential staffers. Look at the reckless projects they were investing in. Whose idea was it that God suddenly, the only way Ghana can be blessed is if we have a $450 million national cathedral? Whose idea was that? To build it in four years. Grand, big, useless vision. No priority. When your hospitals don't have beds, they don't have incubators. Your hospitals don't have MRIs. That is what leads to the agitations. So look, I will also appeal to the young people of our country that military rule cannot be the option. They themselves recognizing that they want the military to come in temporarily. It should tell you that they just want a cleanup. And then they go back to the barracks. But I believe that we can do that cleanup. We the people, if we team up. If parliament, and it's unfortunate that parliament is not doing well. And I hope that we'll all sit up. Many people are going to parliament to catch the eye of presidents, um, extreme partisanship. 
So Parliament is not carrying out its checks and balances under the Montesquieu doctrine of making sure that we hold the executive to account. We have largely, largely derelicted. And that is why confidence level, confidence in the parliamentary institution is at an all-time low. All of us must be worried. The democratic institutions, that it is the military that is high up there, 67%. Why can't we be up there with the military? An electoral commission, as I conclude. I mean, see, look, at it's electoral commission. And you see, I disagree with my colleague that you can just appoint anybody and the independence is really about removal. Hey, even the removal thing, the Charlotte or say matter shows us that even removal, if they are determined to remove you, you can be removed easily. So let's put that aside. We must all, at all times, make sure that we build confidence. Because we are talking about perception. You can't find people who are not known communicators, party activists. Was this not the same party, I recall, in the run-up to Charlotte Osei's nomination, when Dr. Farijan's tenure was coming to an end? They held intellectual discussions, Dankwa Institute and others. They said, can we even have a system where President Mahama will consult with all the opposition parties on the appointment of an electoral commissioner? Doc, were you not in this country? Gabi Ochidaku and others wrote extensively, Dankwa Institute, wrote extensively. Today, because you are in power and appointing your party apparatchiks, you say that, oh, let's not worry about the appointments. Let's be thinking about, about, about protection. And you think that uh, we are going to go with that and keep these people. I will any day advocate a total cleansing of these institutions. And I'm not shy to talk about that. The same way Charlotte Osei was booted out, who was not a known party activist. And I'm glad that already <laughs> the grounds that they use against Charlotte Osei is it incompetence, procurement breaches? Charlotte said at least didn't declare multiple elections. And up to now, we don't even know exactly what the 2020 election results are. They should get ready. Didn't they say that the presidency is just a conveyor belt on these matters? All those political hacks. Because, look, the only way is to implement some tough decisions when we take over. We must not disappoint the Ghanaian people. And we must make sure that people who have no business being in certain institutions, the earlier they are weeded out with all the force we can master, the better. And begin to restore conversion. Because look, if your electoral arbiter, the Ghanaian people are saying that They don't have confidence in them. Hmm? And it is 33%. I mean, that is just a third of the population. I mean, what could be so damning? I would have thought that as for electoral commission, they should even be higher than the, than, 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 than the Ghana Armed Forces. Then we can all, when there is a declaration of results, we know that, look, we will go by it. All of us will have confidence. So, look, let's all be worried. Let's not play ostrich. We have seen what is happening, you know, in neighboring countries. This is not the time to play ostrich at all. Let's admit, as I conclude, Doc, all it took for the Asian Tigers we celebrate. I have read Lee Kuan Yew's book, all his books. It was just 30 years. Just 30 years, one generation, to move from third world to first world. How old is this fourth republic? How old? 32, 33 years. And things that the Singaporeans, the Malaysians, wouldn't understand that there can be a hospital without a bed, without an MRI, without an incubator, and they call it hospital. 
that pregnant women are delivering on bare floors. That young people can't find jobs. Things that they will not even believe. All it took, 30 years. Look at Rwanda. You saw how Kagame won over 90, 90, 99%. Because he's delivering and his democracy. Yes, he may have his human rights flaws. But when you deliver, the people will have confidence in democracy. So, look, patience is running out. And with this digital era, young people communicating amongst themselves, these Gen Zs, seeing what is happening elsewhere, they are no longer going to take their excuses. They are papering over cracks. They want solutions. Their patience is running out. And the earlier as leaders, we all sit up. We've, we've tolerated mediocrity for too long. It just took 30 years for other societies to move from third world to first world. We should not continue marking time.